So I remember when I just came to Lagos, my early days, I found myself living with a superstar, uh, one of the uh, members of the defunct Maintain group, Olu Maintain. Uh, Olu Maintain is a very interesting character and I remember some of the things that happened in the short time I lived in his house. <laughs> Olu was very welcoming, the house was a house of boys. You know, boys were all over the house. I mean, were young, young kids, you know, young chaps staying in the house. And it was funny. Girls from private school will always leave school and come to the house. We had fun. You know, there were many boys, LKT, so many young, young guys, you know, in the house. And so we had one room, that room, we call it um, TV room. You know, it was it wasn't like the kind of door they have now. Those doors were made from plywood, so they they, they have a small hole. We call it peeping room. Somebody they knock, another person go go peep, and and boys were always wanking. <laughs> boys were always wanking that time, you know. And I didn't know, so I would always buy cream, and my cream would, would go from hundred to. 30 in no time. I'm like, I need to rub this much cream. Oh, how my cream take the finish? So I didn't know that boys were using my cream to, to roll dice. You know, but it was quite interesting. Uh, uh, Olu Maintain has always been, for me, one of the most stylish artists Nigeria has ever seen. You know, Olu Maintain in his days of halves and his days of not halves has always been the same person. Olu started, if you remember, Olu started uh wearing two wristwatches at the same time like it was crazy at that time we we'll wear one wristwatch here wear another wristwatch here the same time i'm like wow this guy is out of this world apart from the fact that Olu then had one of the best music videos um um you know this country has ever seen at that time tells you the kind of stylish person he is so olu in his halves and not halves has been the same person like i said um, <laughs> if you see Olu outside, Olu is a king of, I call him the king of packaging, right? So, um, I remember one incident that happened in that house. Olu maintained bought body and ate half of the body and kept half of the body. I didn't know and I ate the body. It became a big problem in the house. Can you go, can you go, my boy? <laughs> It was crazy. And then I remember it was in that house I learned that to survive in Lagos, there are there are some type of girls you need to date. To survive in Lagos, to survive in Lagos as a young guy. I learned it from that house that there are some girls you need to date. They are necessity. They are they are necessary girls you must date as a young boy who is trying to survive in Lagos. Number one, and the most important, you know, um, type of girls you need to date as a young hustling boy in Lagos are girls that their mother sells food. Those are the girls you must date. You must date them. Girls that their mother sell food. So what you do, you, you date one that they sell food in the morning. But those ones are not preferable because morning, everybody eye they shine. But you see those ones that sell food in the evening. Those are the girls you must date as a young guy trying to survive in Lagos. Because, come on, they will send us more go collect food. We will collect food, collect change. Meanwhile, we will not give them money. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So me, I now learned that as I now started dating girls that their mother sells food in the evening. I took it a notch higher. I dated three girls at the same time. One that sells food in the morning, the one that sells in the afternoon, and the one that they sell in the evening. Oh Lord, I was never hungry again. <laughs> never hungry. You know, those girls, shout out to all those girls. Those are girls that people didn't really like to date. And those girls, some guys make them feel less of themselves. Even girls, some girls make them feel less of themselves. So they see you, a young guy, 
you dress well all the time, and then you make them feel special. Baba, you go chop, you go tire. I used to take some of my friends now. Like, ah, guy, what are you doing with this girl? Baba, more go chop, you know, get money. They'll follow us, we sit down, and then they'll serve us whatever we want to eat. Oh, God, I felt like a king. <laughs> so, <laughs> so those, those are some of the experiences I had when I was in the Lou Maintain's house. One of the biggest support I had when I was in the Lou Maintain's house was um, Puffy T. You know, all of these things I'm saying was before Yahoo's there was no Yahoo's at, at this time. So he was just, you know, Olu had left the group and then he was just trying to do his thing. There was a D, there was a DJ Freak T. There were so many guys in the house. So many guys who would always come, you know, hang around. I mean, come on, it's Olu Maintain. He still has, a, you know, all, all of this period, there was no Yahoo's. Yahoo's had not come and then uh, I remember when they did Yahuze, the evening they did Yahuze, I wasn't in the studio, but LKT came and told me and said, guy, we don't get hit jam. I'm like, really? Yeah, say Yahuze. He said, where? He said, they went for Dove Studio. Dove Studio used to be around them, um, or maybe Allen. That's where they recorded, if, I'm, if, I, if my memory serves me right, that's where they recorded Yahuze. It was a combination of Olu Maintain, Eddie, Puffy T, LKT. So if you listen, you hear these four voices, right? If I'm, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think these four voices were in the song and the song was boom everywhere. The song was scattered. Immediately Olu did Yahuze. Everything changed. Olu has always had style. So for imagine somebody who had always had style, but money not really there in hand, and money can come. Yauze, Yauze was the biggest song in this country for almost two years. That was how big. Like, you know, it's not like now where one song rain next month, another song next week, another song. Yauze trended for about two straight years. Olu was playing shows back to Olu was playing shows on Monday. Olu was, god damn it, when money came, Olu became the king that he's supposed to be. I remember one incident that happened again before Yahoo's time. I remember May his gentle soul, rest in peace, late Da Green. Da Green was one of my, my closest buddies at the time. So I remember we went to there's a there's a bar on Ogundano called Vicola Bar. You know, it was just down Ogundano. It, it was run by this man who came from London. And then, you know, he decided that he wants to run a limousine company. And then a, a lounge. It, it was very style. I mean, we had very stylish people on Allen Avenue. So this man came. London man. He was always, always clean. Vicola. His name is Vic, Vic, Victor Ayola. Yes, but he calls it Vicola. Vicola limousine, Vicola bar. He had this small lounge on Ogundano, I think it was number 19, if, I, if my memory serves me right. So one time, myself and Dark Green, we went to Vicola Bar, you know, and then we saw Olu Maintain drinking one full bottle of Fanta by himself. We were, we were shocked that Olu has money, he's drinking a full bottle of Fanta by himself. <laughs> we were that broke. All of this was before Yahuze. All right, so when Yahuze came, Olu was push. I remember, I remember when they wanted to send the song to Calabar because I had worked in uh, CRBC Calabar. I was the one that gave the link. I think it was Destiny Onifade that went to Calabar. Either Destiny or DJ Fikiti, one of them was a person that went to Calabar with, with tapes of Yahuze. Nobody now did it, we just share a link with tapes. Tapes of Yahuze, CDs. Now I went to Calabar to, you know, drop the song. And that's how I distributed the song everywhere, you know, for radio promo and all that. So it was, it was interesting. 